Hello there, world of tankers, and welcome to the channel. I'm your host, Drudels Blitz, and in today's video, we are doing a play to lose in the Grill 15. Yes, you heard that right. The Grill is easily one of the most challenging tanks to run in Tier 10, due to the fact that it sacrifices almost everything for the gun. There's a lot of tanks that sacrifice a lot for their guns. Good example of this would be something like the 4005. It has terrible armor, but the gun is super dangerous. But the 4005 has a lot of advantages over the grill, like camouflage, like the fact that it's much more mobile because it gets super speed boost, like the fact that it does a lot more damage. Those are all big advantages for a vehicle like the 4005. Where the grill gets one thing, and that is accuracy really good pen, and a decent chunk of 580 damage per shot. Apart from that, though, it doesn't really have much else. Its camo is actually terrible. It's one of the worst camo tank destroyers in Tier 10, which is kind of a joke when you think about it. It's supposed to be this super good camo value vehicle, and then it doesn't even have camo. But you can see the advantage of a grill. Being able to shoot a Stritz von K right through the turret with very little effort is pretty dang impressive, and something that I really like about the tank. Now, a lot of the times when I'm using the grill, it will dunk into the dirt, and that was a good example there of my shell doing just exactly that. We can see the 50B. We can see a lot, actually, on the enemy team. I wonder if that Stritzvon's going to try and poke the hill again, or he's not. Well, it's very hard to actually tell what the enemy team's doing right now. Um, we see an enemy grill in the back, and... Well, I'm going to move right over here so we can possibly get a shell into the enemy Progetto. Let's see if he pokes again, and... Oh, it was close. It was very close, but unfortunately, it did not end up hitting. But that's fine. We're going to reload. And if the enemy 50B decides to push, well, we got a lot of vehicles there to honestly help with that. So, I'm not really too worried. And there you go, the 50B got absolutely nuked as well. We have the Progetto poking, and the Prog gets shot, and because of that, he's going to poke... And we're going to aim in a heat shell, but not able to hit him. We also have the 50B, not able to hit that. This is a great example of where we're not able to do anything right now. Classic Grill 15 experience. We're going to take a quick blind shot at the bush. I, I don't know how we actually didn't hit the grill there. That was a little wild, actually. That was a very easy shot, and yet just did not do anything. Oh, well. We're going to be reset on our camo. Our team is doing a decent job holding, and... Well, we'll see. The 183 is taking a look at where the Stritzvon is. So right now, I'm going to push the enemy grill. I think that's really the only play that I can make. So we're going to put on our accuracy, and we're going to poke this bush. Let's see, is the grill there? No. Where did the grill go? I mean, he's not there. We would have spotted him or been detected ourselves. But neither of those situations happened. Well, we do have the enemy 183, and that was a very easy clear into his tank. I actually don't understand where the grill went. He just ran. Like, just gone. Oh, there you go. We found him. Well, we get a nice shell into his vehicle, and we're going to put on our adrenaline. We're going to move on up. Now, this enemy grill is... Well, he's probably going to HE me, but we're going to HE him right back. And we also kill his driver, which is not per se what he wants. So, let's see. Let's see what we can do here. Let's turn our tank... And now, we will have the opportunity to snap him. Bye bye There you go. So we didn't do too much this game, but we did what we needed to. We did 2,800 damage, which is a decent amount, actually, for everything that we had. And our team held, and we actually flanked and killed two tank destroyers. If that 183 had just a little bit more health, we could have done 3,000. But doesn't matter. That's a good battle to start our play to lose with. The Grill 15, I don't usually play it passive unless I'm on a map where you're benefited passive. And I don't play it aggressive unless there's nothing else to do. In that game, I knew instantly that, what am I going to do? Nobody's poking mid-hill, which is where I'm trying to bleed. The tanks that were poking got nuked, and there was nothing else to do. So I knew at that moment, really the only play was going to be the push the enemy grill, clear the 183, and just try to get some little damage scavenging the enemy opponent's hit points. And that's exactly what we did. But... You can definitely see how you don't get a crazy amount of gameplay in the grill until you figure out everything that's going on, where the enemy team is, and what's happening. Sometimes that's a problem, because if your team is losing, 
you usually cannot make a big enough impact before it's over. Sometimes, especially on medium flank. Because you have to remember, in a tank destroyer, you are usually shooting at heavies. You have a lot of pen to cut through heavy tanks, not mediums. The whole point of tank destroyers is to cut through heavily armored vehicles. So, mediums and lights, yes, obviously I can bleed them out, and my pen is very effective against them, but it's much easier to actually cut through heavy tanks than it is for mediums, because they're much slower, they're easier to hit, my accuracy is much better against them. So, that's kind of how I look at the grill. Now, we actually got the good spawn on Castilla, which is nice, and our team is doing good plays. Except our Caro, he's just dumping his clip for literally no reason. Great job, bro. Let's just shoot two shells. Oh, okay. That's wild. So, we're down a player. That's, that's, that's great. Um, well... I'm going to make my way up this hill. I'm obviously not the quickest in this tank, but speed is not key in the grill. It is patience. Patience is key. We have the enemy 2 and 5 be already spotted, and there you go. Easy 589 damage shot into his tank. He says thanks, and we're going to reload again. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and we're going to shoot him right in the track wheel for 650. There you go. That's already half of an enemy 2 and 5 that has been stripped away. He doesn't even know what to do right now. And he's telling me, camp harder. I'm in a tank destroyer, bro. Mold harder, bro. <laughs> kind of wild that you're mad at a tank destroyer for doing its job as a TD. Now we have the M60 and the E50M on the side. And there you go. 570. Now we are going to back. Ooh, we actually didn't get spotted. I'm very surprised. I really thought I was going to be. All right. Well, 2 and 5 is still back there. And we also have the IS-4. I'm very surprised that penned. I actually don't know how that penned. I guess his hull was sticking out further than I thought it was. The enemy 2 and 5B is poking. And 3, 2, 1. There you go. Another easy shell into the enemy FE 2 and 5B. We've already done 2,900 damage this game. And it shows you just how influential tank destroyers are on this map. I like that 2 and 5B still getting mad at uh, me for doing my job in a tank destroyer. A little wild, bruh. Well, there you go. E50 is cleared and gone. So, oh, we're spotted. And we're off the hill. Perfect. <laughs> and he said unstall and now he's dead. That's great. <laughs> uh, imagine getting shot, not once, not twice, but three times by the same tank and poking three times. Kind of wild. But instead of actually learning your lesson, you just mold and chat. That sounds like a skill issue, not gonna lie. I don't feel bad for people like that either. Learn from your mistakes. Don't complain about a tank that's meant to do its job doing its job. Like, what are, what are we getting mad at? You're getting mad that I outplayed you? I don't know. Nice snap into that IS-4 though, huh? Great example of where the grill, especially with reticle calibration, can be very, very dangerous. Now, the 268 was last spotted over here, right kind of where our rhino is heading. So it would be great if we could just catch this 268 off. Uh, let's see. Well, there's the enemy 100 aiming, and, well, he lights me on fire. Something you may notice about my grills that I'm not running small liner. And the reason why is because I would rather have durability on my tank and its modules. Now, we did a fine game. We did 4,832 damage. We hit some really nasty shots, and you got to see where the grill really is in its element. This is probably the best game in terms of farm we'll get in today's video because a lot of games you play you just don't get farm out but we single-handedly controlled that entire heavy flank and we controlled the medium flank we shot the M m60 easily and killed the 50m and not only that but then we also bled out the 2 and 5b three shots into his vehicle taking off over 1700 health we also shot the enemy is4 twice taking off 1100 we bled out the enemy like crazy and we didn't really have much affecting us in return. Now, you did notice the camo values on this tank, pretty mid. I killed that E50M, and we actually got spotted by the E50M. Personally, I think the girl still needs a camo buff. I don't know why Wargaming refuses to give it one. Sure, don't give it as much camo as something like the Waffenträger Panzer IV, which is sitting at 75%. But give it 70%. That way, at least when you're sitting still, you won't get spotted every time you press the fire button. It's very annoying. If you do want it to have bad camo, then give it higher alpha. That way it at least makes sense why you're getting spotted every time you shoot. This is not a large tank. It should have good camo values. The fact that a Jagdpanzer E100 only has slightly worse camo makes very little sense if you ask me. But, oh well. It's wargaming, right? Sometimes they do things that make absolutely no sense whatsoever. This game, we are going to quickly position 
right into that bush in front of me. Hopefully our teammates don't take that position because that's where I obviously want to go. It's a very, very good spot to play a tank like the Grill. So we have the Sheridan in the back, and here we go. Nice. Okay, we've been able to get exactly where I want to be. So now we're going to turn our tank to the side so we've gun depression, and if anything tries to cross, we should easily be able to get a shell out, unless our IS-7 blocks it, but we'll be fine. However, as we're noticing, the enemy team is not playing towards the side of the map. If they were, they would have been spotted. I take it back. They are over here, but just in positions that make very little sense. Okay. Well, um, got to be cautious because of the way that this enemy team is playing. But we have the 100, and we're going to aim it on this tank. There you go. Nice 595 shell. Good example of, again, the grill getting out some big old bonks. We're going to put on our adrenaline, and we're going to snap the Sharfy Chair 4. 636 damage into his tank. And we're going to back up in a way that it's very hard for him to hit me. Sheridan is also in the back. Obviously not a tank that I want to be hit by, at least right now. There you go. He outtraded me, though. Even though I have more alpha damage, he outtraded me by quite a bit. Over 100, which is very annoying, but, well, that's what happens sometimes when you play tank destroyers. You don't always get the rolls that you want. We got the Contra Car 1 Mark II in the back, and I think we're doing a pretty good job so far. We're bleeding out the enemy exactly the way we need to be. We get a nice shell into the enemy Contra Car 1 Mark II. By the way, look at how bad this thing's camo value is. Like, that's a joke. I don't think you can deny it. It's it's a joke that I got shot uh, from that enemy Contra Caro. But we hit him back, and we hit him back hard. I mean, the gun hits hard, but look at how easy we're getting spotted. It's stupid. It really is. This tank needs better camo values. Nobody's going to deny that. The Minnow is getting blood out quite a bit. We have the enemy AMX M4, who I'm hoping is going to be distracted on my teammate, which is then going to allow me to poke, aim him, and get a nice... Ooh, bad roll. 476. That's pretty tragic. But we still got the pen. We're over 3,000 damage at this point, and we're doing a pretty solid job. So the Progetto is going to push the AMX. I-7 is going to get a nice shell out as well. And that AMX went from being pretty healthy to pretty not healthy. We have the Sheridan in the back, and we get a nice shell into the enemy Sheridan. We're going to put on our adrenaline, and Sheridan's dead. Pretty good stuff. AMX M4 shoots, which now gives me the ability to push up and hopefully get a nice shell into the AMX, and there he- oh, classic grill moment there, where you have an easy shell, but the gun decides to miss it. That's pretty common for this tank, to be entirely honest, but we load a gold shell, we guarantee the pen on the AMX, and just like that, we have another pretty solid game. So we're going to put on our accuracy to guarantee the pen on the Char, 580 damage, which is our exact average, and we win. So... Pretty good stuff. I think this Progetto is mad at me that I, like, got in his way or something, even though he was the one in my way. Doesn't really matter. The game's over. We did our job, and we got another win. Good example, though, of where we're playing the Grill Aggressive. We actually did 5,000 that game. We had a pretty easy farm. And it's because, again, notice how I took advantage of the enemy's misplays. I saw that the enemy was not playing aggressive. Like, for some reason, they just didn't drive to the flank that we were at, until it was over, which obviously allowed me to get the upper hand on the enemy players, catch them off guard, and get a win. But sometimes you will play aggressive in the grill and get instantly nuked. This tank does not reverse very fast, and it has very weak track wheels. In fact, I'm running a very weird loadout on my grill. I am running double track durability, and it helps a lot. It really does, because... Getting tracked in this tank specifically really sucks because, you know, some tanks, if you get tracked, you still have armor, but you don't in this, especially if like an autoloader is shooting at you, a TVP, for example, I don't want to get permanently tracked by a TVP, lose two thirds of my health because I couldn't back up. And I'm only running one repair kit because I'm also running uh, adrenaline and my accuracy reticle calibration. So I can't afford to risk getting tracked with only one repair kit, or at least constantly tracked. So what I've done is I'm running uh, improved tracks as equipment, and I'm also running improved module durability. And those two things paired make my tracks much stronger, probably about 60-ish percent stronger. And not only that, but if my tracks get damaged, they are instantly repaired. Not broken, but damaged. So those are all really good things. It means that essentially... 
It's going to be very hard to stop my grill from reversing. It's going to be very hard to lock it down in position. And that's usually what gets a lot of grill players killed, is simply getting tracked. So if I can stop that from happening, it will be a massive, massive benefit to me. So we get a nice shell into the enemy 200 LT. It is a low roll, but a pen's a pen, and that's all we really care about. So we've already taken away some of his capabilities. He's obviously going to try and run. Now, interestingly... Nothing has been spotted on the... Ooh. Ooh, wow, 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 woo-wee, woo-wee, woo. That sucks. All right, well, let's put on our adrenaline. And let's see if that Sharfy Chair 4 decides to poke. He does, kind of, but we still got the shell out, so it doesn't really matter. His game's over, just like that. We have taken two tanks out of the game. I mean, obviously, some help from the 704, but still a great example of, uh, of where the grill is super, super nasty. That Fosh is running and... There you go. 607 damage shell into his tank. He's out of the game. And we've already done 1700, just chilling at the back of the map. This is where being passive in the grill feels very effective. Now, the problem is, our team is not doing great. We do have the enemy Fosh, though. Not able to hit him at the current position. Bonk. There you go. 562 damage shell into the XM. And now we finally back up. 704 is spotted, but it's not something that I'm too personally worried about. Let's see. We have the T100 who is making a super aggressive move. I'm going to aim it on the XM, and there you go. That was worth. That just took off a massive chunk of his capabilities. And because of that, the XM really can't play too aggressive anymore. At this point, I see what's happening, and I'm not going to be there to watch it go down. So we're going to leave. We're going to leave very quickly. We're going to head over towards the rest of our team. We have three heavies, or three heavily armored vehicles, I should say. And, uh, well, none of them are really supporting me right now. So we need to get the flock out of here as quickly as possible. Thankfully, the grill has mobility. While I'm not running a proof fuel on it, so I'm not going as quick as I ideally would like to, we're still chilling at around 50, which is similar to what something like the Progetto would. So that's pretty nice. And we have the 57 Heavy over here already. So that's all really, really good. So literally what we're going to do is just swap positions. We're going to go from camping on one side of the map to camping on the other. That's it. And that's going to allow me to outposition our opponents, hopefully in a way that I can get bleeds into them. So we're going to head all the way over here, and there you go. Now we are properly positioned. So if the enemy XM decides to poke, it's very possible we can get some bleeds out. They have three tanks left. I don't know where the Fosh is, and it wouldn't surprise me if that Progetto decided to poke over here. So we'll see. Uh, at this point, I don't really gain much from playing too aggressive. I mean, yes, I do have health, but... You know, oh, there you go. Great example. The enemy Progetto is spotted all the way in the back over here. So what is that Progetto going to do? Well, looks like he's trying to maneuver as quickly as he can, but he nuked himself. So, oh well. We're going to aim it on the Fosh. Nope. No pen. Little Sag, but it's not too big of a deal. I need to push him, though, because if I don't, our team is going to lose. All right. He's dead. And, I mean, the Badger's still healthy, but the 57 enemy's pretty low. I don't know how much damage we actually ended up dealing this game. Probably not a crazy amount, but we also didn't need to do that much damage to end up winning. There you go. Easy clear into the enemy Progetto. That obviously helps out our Badger. And at that point, all that's left is an enemy Fosh, who we're going to aim in on with a high explosive. You know what? That's 330 damage I would not have had. And that skyrocketed us over 3,000 damage. So kind of a double whammy there. I'll take it. I'll take it. Notice how this game, I stayed in the back as long as I could, but the moment I knew that it wasn't worth it to hold there anymore, I left. You have to use that common knowledge when you're playing a vehicle like this. You cannot just sit in the back and think that everything's going to go well. Sure, I could have waited below the rails for the Progetto to possibly rush over, but there's no way I would have been able to kill a Progetto and an XM66F. It's just not possible. Even if I nuked the XM and brought him down to 50 health, he had like 700 and something, so I couldn't have one-shot him. The XM would have shot me, the Progetto would have clipped me, and my game would have been over, just like that. I would have done one shot of damage if they both rushed over the ridge. That's not worth it. When I could just leave, reposition, and get a shell out anyway. Now, in that game, we didn't really get another shot out. I mean, we did, like, another 400-ish damage because we did 90 to the Progetto and then 300 to the Fosh, but we didn't get that much more damage out that game. But if we needed to, we were able to cover our teammates. 
our teammates were just kind of dumb in their positioning. The Yo put himself in a spot where I couldn't cover him. The Badger went too aggressive where I couldn't cover him. My team just didn't really position themselves in ways that allowed me to cover them, which is why that game is a little sus at the end. But our Badger was healthy enough that it didn't matter all too much. So we are again going to use that good mobility the Grill has to quickly make our way into the front line here. And this is going to allow us, if any enemy tanks decide to play aggressive, to possibly get a bleed out. So we're going to chill here. And we have our camo net active. This tank doesn't have the best camo, but it has some camo, which is, well, what you want. So our E3 is sitting out in the open, and we have the Chieftain in the back. But, of course, the E50M decided out of all the positions he was going to go that, he, oh, what is our E3 doing, bro? What is he doing? Well, this is probably a loss, because our E3 exists. And, unfortunately, our E3 does not exist as a good player. We are getting some nice shells, at least, into the enemy 75, though, so that's pretty good. Um, but yeah, not not a great job from our team. Let's even on that yo. Sorry, 60. Uh, I didn't mean to block the 60. I really didn't, but I thought he was going to shoot and he didn't. All right. Well, we're going to have to back up here. The BZ's getting bled, which is not good. Uh, let's see. I'm going to back up. Aiming, aiming, and there you go. Nice shot into the enemy chieftain. Oh, nice. 60 got a shell into the 50. That's pretty good as well. Okay. Well, this is a loss. 100%. This is a loss, bro. I mean, look at our team. I'm getting out bleeds, but I don't know how much it's going to matter when our team is dying this quickly. All right, let's see. Come on, 60, shoot him. Well, he didn't. But we do have the yo in the back still, which I think we got a nice pen into at least, so that's pretty good. All right, well, we're holding over here, but our medium flank is completely lost in more ways than one, which obviously sucks. Nice shot into the, the chieftain, though. I'll take that. That's pretty good. Okay, well, reloading, reloading, and let's see, I have the E75 showing me his side. Of course, the Chieftain was able to high explosive pen me. Not only that, but he freaking damaged my commander. No camo Chieftain, but he's smart enough to know what HE is. Wild. Alright, well, whatever. I mean, a damaged commander means... Am I still spotted? I refuse to believe that I'm still... How? How am I still spotted, bro? How? I'd actually really like to know that one. All right, well, we have the enemy chieftain, and there you go. Nice shot into his hatch. We're going to... This sucks. Like, this is legit. It's just awful. This is the worst situation I've ever been in. Like, wow. Well, everything must come to an end. Games like this are battles that make the game very unenjoyable for me. Because... It wasn't even the grill's fault. You know, normally I'd be like, oh, I'm in a glass cannon, so it makes sense that I couldn't really hold. But that's not the case. This game lasted about two minutes, and in those two minutes, I did 4,500 damage. I shot on reload from the start of the game. I don't think I made any mistakes whatsoever, and yet we lost. And it wouldn't even have been a win if we had won the heavy flank, because the medium flank was falling apart. This could have been an absolutely wild damage farm of a game, because, I mean, the heavies in front of me were absolutely brain dead, and I had the opportunity to keep shooting them over and over and over. There was still so much health on the enemy team, but unfortunately, our medium flank sucked. We had an object on 40 that did zero damage. Our Contra Car 1 Mark 2 that went medium flank did zero damage. So we had two people that went in the medium side that did zero, and it just... Everything that happened in this game was incredibly unenjoyable. I think the funny part is that we also lost credits. I don't even know if I loaded gold, but like the fact that I did 4,400 damage, didn't miss a single shell, did everything perfect, and still lost 14,000 credits, it shows how bad the credit economy sometimes is in this game. But I really like the grill. I think it's a fun tank, and the grill itself was not the reason that I ended up losing this play to lose. It was just a bad team. If I was in any tier 10, that game would have been a loss. Because if I was in a medium, some other tank would have been on heavy flank, and the heavy flank would have lost either way. Unfortunately, you just get bad teams sometimes. And while it makes me hate the game, at the same time, uh, it is nice to be able to get some farm out in the battle like this at least. So let me know in the comments what you guys think about the grill. I think it's a really fun tank. I think in a skilled player's hands, it can be super, super influential. But... That's where we're going to wrap it here. Hopefully you enjoyed today's video, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.